All right, Brian, been looking forward to talking to you for quite a bit with what you do as far as factory filmer. I mean, I guess that's what the best thing I could describe it as. Yes. What would you guys consider it? Yeah, it's, it's all about video breakdowns and analysis, and we even do some lip pro data and stuff like that during the week. But yeah, on the weekends, the important part is the video breakdown stuff. It's um, being able to find that separation quick so the riders can process it and be able to get dialed in for the night show is a big deal. I'll admit, I still go on YouTube and watch like Gary Bailey Supercross San Diego 2002, you know, and he has the Handycam, th same thing yes. that this thing is filmed off of. And they've been doing video filming for forever. He did it back in the 80s. Yes. But what you guys have been able to do in the last 10 years is unbelievable with the data overlay that all the teams are able to pull. But then with you filming one big perspective, able to match riders too. So what is the perk and what's the importance of factory filming right now? Well, and it's funny you bring up Gary Bailey. Um, that's kind of how I got started on doing this because I'm like you. I used to watch his videos and mm -hmm. stuff, so it it became important to me that you know when I was still racing that I had my mom and other people video. So because I wanted to go back and critique, mm -hmm. and so I, I started to realize that there's a you know there's been people doing it for a long time, but a lot of times it's just one of the factory personnel that's doing it and then it's left to the riders to just kind of decipher this stuff and I figured you know if we can break it down and put a little bit more science behind it and study it from not only a rider technique or bike setup perspective but angles forward momentum jump height there's a lot of things that are being factored in I think the better the riders can understand what's creating the separation helps in that process as well so but on Saturday, it's about, for me, it's about getting it done fast, mm -hmm. being able to process the information and get it broke down. Because that's been the big thing over the last 10 years is it, the way we have done it in the past, it's took a long time to get two riders set up to be able to mm -hmm. analyze information. And the process we're using now, I can have two guys up in under a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I know... If on a Saturday, and I've done this for a couple of years now, especially during the last time qualifying session, I'll go up to the factory yeah. filming if it's like 350, 450, 550, whatever the high up is, and I'll shoot practice laps from there because in one sequence, I can shoot the entire track and I can see exactly what a guy's doing. And fans love it because they want to see the whole lap rather than just the five foot away heater clip. Yes. And there's all the teams that are up there. And like I said, everybody has a camera similar to mine on a tripod that's just filming one thing or they're filming their two guys. I love the iPad setup that you have because it has the big wide lens and then the program that you're running is capturing all of that information from one place and it's sequencing it into one thing rather than having to go do an SD card dump and then drop it into yes, this program yes. here and then do this there. That, that's been one of the biggest challenges is transferring the data because even if you're doing it from an iPhone to an iPad or something s small, it still takes time mm -hmm. to do that. And, and time is of the essence on yeah, a Saturday. Yeah, because yeah, there's not much time to work with. So, um, yeah, the more that we can do that in a fast manner, but like you were saying with a wide lens, we film everything. Mm -hmm. We don't miss anything. So if Jason wants to see, you know, Malcolm on lap five, I've got some people that's helping me run numbers in the background mm -hmm. so I can get to that within a minute. He can be mm -hmm. able to see that footage, that information, or if he wants to be matched up with someone, you know, we usually do the fastest out of like the untimed, mm -hmm. but like last weekend at Birmingham, he wanted somebody else also. So within two minutes, I was not only able to get him a breakdown versus the fastest, but I was able to get him a breakdown versus the other rider that he wanted as well. So We're going to get a demo of the program here in a minute, but I wanted to yeah. talk to you before we get into that. Time is of the essence because how many guys are you trying to get this information to? I know we're in front of the factory Cowie truck right now, and Jason has been a big advocate of this technology for a bit. I mean, yeah. I did an interview when he was a rock star Husky rider with Burke talking about this exact thing because he liked it so much then. But how many guys are you trying to help with this information? I do quite a few on a weekend. <laughs> I've done as many as uh, one weekend. We did as many as 16. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I, I don't try to do that. But you've got east-west shootouts sometimes, and you've got people from both coasts. Sometimes it gets a little crazy. On those weekends, I have some people that help video besides myself that helps that process so we can fit that in. But on an average weekend, probably 10 to 12 is where we like to stay. Yeah. Okay. 
I know that this seems so common sense, like I was just walking over here and the Phoenix Honda truck is watching MotoGP. And I love MotoGP because of all the data that's with that. The same things that we're doing here as far as video overlay they've been doing there and all of the data that's on GPS sensors and gear position sensors, all of that. Yeah. That's a big thing that you guys know the importance of, but I don't think some people think like, nah, you just gotta go faster through the corners, but the bike data that you guys have, the rider physical data that they have off of, you know, whatever kind of yeah. lit pro device is connected yes. to the helmet or then a heart rate monitor, and then you have this video that actually puts all of that sequencing together. It's an unbelievable package that is able to be put, yeah. put yeah, together can, in 10 minutes. Yeah, and we can actually, like during the week, you can even do like the lit pro data with the video stuff. Mm -hmm to really analyze it. And then with like Theo and stuff, they're getting all the data off the bike. And it's nice to be able to cross-reference that stuff together to make sure you're coming up with the, right with, thing. With the same thing. Cause um, Oscar, he's real big on, you know, being able to cross-reference stuff because you don't want to give people the wrong data. Yeah. Because if you do, then you're not, not only are you not helping, you're actually hurting the process. So to me, being able to make sure the data is accurate is very important you know so we do a lot to cross reference cross check stuff to make sure that we're coming up with the same thing and since i do multiple riders i'm seeing it from a different perspective on multiple guys so usually we get a read on whether something is one way or another because of the amount of people we're doing okay have you always been a like data numbers kind of guy yeah, I've always, math's always been my thing, so I, I like being able to figure stuff out. I like looking at stuff from a physical standpoint. Um, aviation is another thing that I like, so, you know, you've got different forces on in aviation as far as drag and gravity and the, the stuff that's playing. You know, in our sport, with Supercross especially, it's a lot of angles, mm -hmm. a lot of jump height, a lot of forward momentum stuff. It's little pieces that, that really cause the separation week in and week out, so... Um, sometimes they look like easy adjustments, but a lot of times the riders have a habit of doing something a certain way. So even though it may look like an easy adjustment on the surface, sometimes it's something they got to put some time into mm -hmm. to be able to execute on the fly. What you just said about angles is huge because, I mean, that's what the whole thing is. Even for me as a guy that's shooting video on the floor or shooting photos, it's about finding the right angle. But then when I'm watching the guys go through, like, say, a rutted turn, I'm seeing how many different angles of their body position, the fork, the tires in the rut this way, they're in this gear position, the RPMs at this position. And there's so much energy that's going around that you're just like, wow, one tick off here makes this one worse, which makes this one worse, and this, this, and this. And then again, you have the video that lays that all out there. Yeah, because a lot of times, like in turns, especially in Supercross, part of the battle is figuring out whether it's cutting distance in the turns better, or is it momentum around the turn that's better? And it's different for every turn, every weekend, so that's part of the puzzle we figure out week in and week out. Okay, let's get a look at uh, what the program looks like when you guys show them a lap. So this will be Birmingham from last week? Yes. Here's a good example from Birmingham last week, main event one for 450s. This is Ken Roxon here on the left, Chase Sexton on the right. And as fast as Chase was going on Saturday night, you'll see here, this is a good example of angles, distance versus momentum. So as they go in the turn here, you'll see Kenny's angle into the turn. He's got a better angle. He shaves distance on the entry. And Chase goes around the outside well, but it's a longer route, so the momentum has to override the distance that Kenny is shaving. You can see here, Kenny's already ahead by almost a bike length before they even exit the turn. So the question is, does Chase's momentum by taking the wider line actually work out or does Kenny's shorter line with a better angle into the turn shaving distance play favor? And you can see right here, it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal to these guys at this level. So we'll put a time on it. It's right at about a tenth of a second. So, and if that happens several places around the track, that starts to add up and give one rider an advantage over another, especially at the with the fastest guys. After un 
after an untimed practice, I do a breakdown and they get it on the app within a few minutes after they're done with practice. You guys up? Because there's not much time in between there. So it pretty much follows the guy. We do a side-by-side -side thing on Saturday. We can do ghosting, but the side-by-side -side, uh, has a little bit more clarity for the ruts on the track and the lines and stuff. So, and then what happens is once we get through here, we'll actually, we put a clock on it and see how much separation is being created. So for like instance on this one, uh, hold on. So that's about three tenths of a second. I'll do one more here. So anytime there's any significant separation, we'll actually put a stopwatch on it. So like that one's a little under two tenths of a second. Mm -hmm. okay. So, okay, with the app and all of the stuff, and you said some people working back at home with Hungry to Win. How many people is that? And if someone was interested in learning more about this, how did they get in contact with you guys? Um, so my two daughters do numbers at home, which helps the process in getting to the fast laps quick. That's part of the process on Saturday is being able to find that fast lap within the footage because once you pull the footage, once you pull the footage up then you've got to be able to find that fast lap. Yeah. So they do the math behind the scenes to help get that fast lap so I can pull it up. Are they know. are they numbers girls like you? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. So it runs in the family? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. Is it nice to have a family influence in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to have them involved for sure. Okay. So. For people to watch this and that, you know, are just going to their local practice track and they might have their friend or their sibling or their girlfriend, wife, mom, whatever it is, what would you say is the most important benefit of filming just any rider for them to figure out their technique? It's just pretty much getting good information that you can analyze and be factual with. You know, it isn't whether, hey, I think this or I think that. The video, it's frame by frame, so there's no, I mean, you could manipulate it if you wanted to, but if you just leave it in its raw format, you're not, it's, it's going to give you good, concrete, black and white facts that, that you can use to help improve your riding and stuff. So if somebody wanted, and the nice thing about this program is um, it's on form, so it's used by the golf community. Like it's one of the most used apps in golf. So it's very reasonable for somebody that's, you know, say going to their local practice track or whatever. You can, if you're using it personally, you can do it for like five bucks a month. So, so we'll wrap this up because I hated to crash the Cowie lunch, but on form, <laughs> that is the app that people need you to go look at. And yes, then just what's the perks of it? What's that? What would be a perk of it? Just like easy user yeah, interface? Yeah, easy. You can do it with an iPhone. So if you're at the practice track, you can video a clip real quick. You can video a clip of somebody else and have them matched up in a few seconds. Very simple, very easy to use. Perfect. So. Thank you, Brian. Yeah.